Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. Do you know that you can create patterns from simple tops hanging in your closet right now? In this tutorial, we show you how to deconstruct tank tops, t-shirts, and basic tops so you can draft your own patterns and recreate your favorite shirt. We demonstrate on how to create bodice pieces, elastic casings, sleeves, collars, and even ruffles. So let's go ahead and get started. To start with, you're going to need to pick a top, and I recommend picking a simple top. So something that doesn't have a lot of details going on for your first one. Something like a tank top, a t-shirt, a simple top that only has a few pieces to it. You're also going to need a large piece of cardboard, and this is what I'm going to put my paper and my shirt on that I'm going to replicate. I have my pattern paper, or if you just have large sheets of paper, that'll work as well. Also, you're going to need some type of ruler. I have a straight ruler, and you can also use a curved ruler if you need help doing the armholes. I have some straight pins, a tracing wheel, and definitely use the one that has the serrated blade, and then also a pencil. We're going to start with an easy one first. So the first thing we're going to do is do the bodice pieces of our shirt. So that's the back of the shirt and the front of the shirt. And with the tank top, it's definitely really easy because it's only two pieces. And we're going to start with the back part of the shirt first. So this we're looking at the back of the shirt and it's right side out. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a large sheet of paper that's about four inches wider than my shirt and four inches longer than my shirt as well. And I take this paper, I fold it in half lengthwise, and then I pin it to my cardboard. So you can see my cardboard is under here. Now I have my fold of the paper going down the middle of my cardboard and I place my tank top on it. So the fold of the paper is going right down the middle of the shirt. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when we create the bodice piece, we need to make sure that one side is symmetrical to the other side. So instead of opening up the paper and trying to make a copy of the whole thing, and if you do it really carefully, you can probably do it symmetrical. But by folding it, using my serrated tracing wheel, which is gonna puncture through both sides of the paper since it's folded in half, and I'm gonna outline my tank top. When I open up the paper, it's definitely gonna be symmetrical because it's folded in half and I'm doing half of the tank top. So this is just the easiest way for me to do it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tracing wheel. I already pinned my shirt into place, so I'm making sure that it's not gonna move around and I'm making sure that there's not any big wrinkles or anything. It's as smooth as it can be. It's folded right on the seam line here. And again, we're looking at the back of the shirt. So with my tracing wheel, I'm just gonna start outlining the shirt and I'm pressing down to make sure it's actually punching through the paper. Now down here, I started with actually the bottom of the shirt. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that I'm realizing what the hem is going to be. So if I just carefully lift this up, I'm gonna measure the hem allowance, and I've already measured it, and it's three quarters of an inch. So I'm just gonna make a little note to myself, three quarters of an inch hem allowance. So when I finish outlining, I'm gonna actually extend this line to include the hem allowance. And you're also gonna make a decision on whatever you want your seam allowance to be as well. So once I've gone to the edge here, and you could go a little bit past the edge, because now I'm gonna go this way. So I just know that when I cut it out, wherever I have the, the lines meet, that's gonna be the line. Now, if you don't have a tracing wheel, you can also use either a push pin or just your straight pin, and you can just punch through. Because we have the cardboard underneath, it makes it pretty easy to do. The tracing wheel is just faster instead of just doing one dot at a time. With the tracing wheel, I can just do it a lot faster. Also what I'm paying attention to as I'm doing this is I'm making note of how they're finishing the armhole and the neckline. So for this, they, it looks like they used a separate binding 
So I'm just going to be making notes as I'm going along, measuring the binding, and then trying to figure out how long this is going to be because obviously I'm going to have to do a separate part in order to finish that. And if you don't know how to sew on a binding onto a tank top, you can definitely watch our tutorial on the tank top assembly where we kind of show you how to create it and then how to put it on there. So I'm just going to go and then I could just add here, oh, I want to make sure that I do a half inch seam allowance that I'm going to add to the side seam or wherever else I have a seam. Next I'm going to unfold my paper and I'm going to use a pencil to draw along the marks I made with the tracing wheel. Now I just used a pen here, a black pen, so it would be a little bit easier for you to see on camera. But I'm really using the tracing wheel as a guideline. So sometimes because, well at least I'm not perfect, I'll be tracing along the outside of my shirt and maybe it's a little not straight, it's not perfect. So I'm using it as a guideline. Let's say for example the bottom of the shirt, all I'm going to do is compare it, my, the marks I make, with a ruler. And I'll see for the most part it's pretty straight but maybe I go off a little bit here. So I use my ruler and I draw a line so then I end up having a nice straight line instead of a, a line that's kind of crooked. So I'm again using the tracing wheel as a guideline for making my marks. For the most part it's doing the outline. I could do the same thing for the sides here where you can see it definitely has a curve in the middle but down here at the bottom it's pretty straight. So I can at least do part of it and then maybe just kind of curve it here and then again it straightens out again so I would use my ruler in order to at least draw the straight part. For the armhole area I like to use a curvy ruler, which this one is the French curve, and this helps me kind of straighten out the parts that are a little curvy, such as the neckline or the armhole. So this I kind of let line up with my dots or my marks and then kind of get a more smooth curve here at the armhole area. Now you'll notice that I have this red dotted line this is with the seam allowance. So this is just the base part and then I add the seam allowance. So I have a half inch added at the sides and then also at the shoulder seams. This down here includes my three quarter hem allowance that I added. And at the armhole and the neckline, I'm just doing a quarter of an inch because I'm just going to use the binding for that part. Now you'll notice since it's opened up, I did it for both sides. So now I have a full pattern. If you don't have that much paper and you're just having a piece that stops right here, you could just do like I did and trace half of the shirt and then on this part where it's cut off, just place, put place on fold and then your pattern piece you would place on the fold of your fabric and you would get the same effect without having to outline the whole thing like I did. Definitely when you finish, it's very important to label your pattern piece. So this is a tank top, it's the back of the tank top, I would cut one or cut one on fold if that's the way you wanted to do it. And I'm putting what type of fabric I need to use in order to make this pattern. And you're always going back to your original shirt. So this shirt is stretchy, it's used, it's made with knit fabric, so I'm putting knit fabric here. So if I make this tank top and I'm trying to replicate this look, I also have to use knit fabric. I can't use woven or it's not going to work. What if you wanted to replicate something with sleeves? Let's take for example my t-shirt here. So if I'm pinning it and doing everything just like I did the tank top, would I then be using my tracing wheel to outline it and then go outline the sleeve as well? Not necessarily. In the example of this t-shirt, you can see right here. I have a seam line. So that means my sleeve is a separate piece, therefore I need a separate pattern piece for the sleeve. And again, we're just doing the back bodice in this case, or the back of the t-shirt. So then how do we make sure that we get the outline of the armhole of the t-shirt? Well, it's very simple. First thing I do is I go ahead and I pin everything down to my paper except for the sleeve portion. And then I just take my sleeve and I fold it back. 
So then I have the seam line is going to be right on the fold. Let me just move this down a little bit so you can see that. And then once it's folded over and everything looks pretty neat, you can then go ahead and pin that into place. And now you can clearly see the armhole shape, which is similar to the tank top. So here's the side seam and then it kind of curves in and then we go back up to the shoulder. So that's what I would do for when I'm replicating the black at the back of the t-shirt. Now I also want to point out here I have the neckline and if you look very carefully with a lot of t-shirts, there's a binding which is a separate part that actually is taller than the natural neckline right here. This is where the seam line is. So when I'm trying to replicate the neckline of the bodice of the t-shirt, I wouldn't come up to the top of the binding and then go here. Instead, what I can do is take a straight pin and push through right where the top of the natural seam line is. So I'm getting right in the middle there and that's gonna help create that line for me. I just want to show one more example of replicating a bodice. Now this one is different because instead of having the normal hemline at the bottom of this one, it's actually a casing that they put elastic in so it's cinched on the bottom of the shirt. Now this is also very easy to replicate, but the problem is if I just go ahead and trace the outline, it's not going to be the same because it's all cinched on the bottom. So I start pinning it the same way where the bottom here is pinned in the middle of my paper or the middle of the shirt is right on the edge of my paper. And I put in a couple of pins to hold it because I don't want to actually pop it out. And all I'm going to do is stretch the bottom so then it becomes its original size that it was before the elastic was in there. So we don't actually have to take anything apart to figure anything out here. So once I have that, I can go ahead pin it into place and now this is going to give me an accurate width of the bottom of my shirt. Let's do one more just to hold that. All right, so now I can go ahead, use my tracing wheel to outline the bottom, but I also need to make note of how wide this casing is and then how wide the elastic is. So it's very helpful to have a sewing gauge. And I can make note, okay, the elastic is a quarter of an inch. So these are all notes you take as you go along. Quarter inch elastic. And the casing needs to be a little bit more than that. So it's folded over a quarter of an inch and then it's tucked under a little bit. So I would probably make it uh, three eighths to half inch. So let's say a half inch will be added to the bottom of my shirt. So I, that's where I would do my red line. So I do a half inch for the casing. And that way I can do something very similar to what they have here. After you finish the back bodice, we can then move on to doing the front bodice. And again, I have my tank top as an example. Now the front and the back usually aren't the same. And the main difference is, is the neckline. You can see here with it right side up now, the front neckline swoops down a lot more than my back neckline. So that's why you can't use the same pattern piece. Now the side seams and the length of the hem, those should be pretty similar. So if you wanna just duplicate your side seam from your back pattern and start that as the basis of your front pattern, that's perfectly fine to do. And I recommend it since that way you can make sure that those side seams are gonna be exactly the same. You also want your shoulder seams to be exactly the same because whatever seams need to match together, they need to be exactly the same. Now for the neckline, because we have the fabric in the way, in this particular case, what I'm gonna be doing is using my straight pin or a push pin. And instead of using my tracing wheel, since it doesn't go through the fabric very well, I'm just gonna punch right along that neckline going through my paper and my cardboard. So that's what's gonna give me the shape for that. Next, we're gonna tackle doing the sleeves. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it on a short sleeve, but you can also do this with a long sleeve as well. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a large sheet of paper again, I'm gonna fold it in half, so I have my fold line right here, 
And this is so I can only do half of the sleeve and yet when I open it up, I get a full sleeve pattern. So to do it, first you're gonna lie your shirt flat. So the sleeve is already folded in half. Here's the top of the sleeve and here's the bottom of the sleeve. I have an actual underarm seam right down here on the bottom. And you can see I already drew a line, a straight line going across my paper. And this length is actually the length of the bottom of my sleeve. So where you have the hem of the sleeve. I'm also going to measure the inside part or whatever you wanna do for the hem allowance for the sleeve and go ahead and make a note so you can go ahead and include that when you finish doing this outline. So with the sleeve still folded like this, I'm actually going to flip my shirt over to the back. So now I'm looking at the back of the sleeve. I'm gonna rotate it. So we have this line lining up with the bottom of the shirt and I'm going to mark where the top of my sleeve is. So right where the seam line is, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it on my paper. All right, so that's that little marker here. I'll make it a little bigger so you can see it. Once you have it marked, go ahead and pin the section to the fold of your paper. And grab a couple straight pins here. Once it's pinned, we can move on to the next section, which is now we're gonna do this top part right here. So I'm just doing it in pin so you can see it a little bit better. You can still use your tracing wheel if you wanna do it, or you can do it in pin. And then after I finish doing that, I can then go ahead and go over the pin with my tracing wheel. So that way it marks it on the other side of the paper and I don't have to do it again. So at the top of this sleeve now, I'm gonna go ahead, let me move this down a little bit so you can see it. Go ahead and make a mark. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Because normally you have sleeves, they start here and then they kinda angle upward. So that's why I'm just marking the top Point, and then I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to connect these two lines. Okay. So there's the side, the underarm seam of my sleeve. Now I'm going to lay this part down and you'll see my, my sleeve kind of goes in. That's fine. I mean, you want it to be a straight line. So Definitely, since I've worn this shirt a lot, it's not gonna be perfectly straight and it's gonna be a little stretched out. All right, so now I'm gonna take this portion of my shirt now and I'm gonna fold it over my sleeve. And all I'm doing is I'm trying to see, again, we have this underarm or the sleeve seam, not the underarm seam, but the sleeve seam that we looked at again when we were doing that bodice with the t-shirt. And now I'm gonna pin this into place because this is showing us what it looks like with the bodice. And this is gonna help me do the top part. Now for this one, it's a little tricky because with the normal pattern for a sleeve, it kind of curves upward and it kind of looks like half a bell. So you're gonna wanna definitely replicate that. I'm just gonna do it in a dash line so I could always perfect it. So sometimes with your sleeve, you can just do this top portion, maybe you get to here and then it keeps going up. Just do here and then you're gonna wanna curve it to your original line here at the top. So let's go ahead and remove these straight pins so we can see what it looks like. I don't know what it looks like either. Hopefully I did good. All right, this looks pretty good. You're always gonna make sure you have a straight edge here and a straight line here to begin. And then I can just fill it in if I need to. But you definitely want it to kind of go up and kind of curve over here. So that looks about right. Might need to be a little bit more curvy, but I can always curve it a little bit more if I need to. So again, 
since I didn't panic and go ahead and trace it with my tracing wheel so I get it on the other side of my paper as well. And don't forget to add your hem allowance for the sleeve and then you're going to do your seam allowance for the underarm seam and then also for the top of the sleeve as well. So for these I would probably go ahead and do a half inch. Let's talk a little bit about collars because sometimes your top have collars and you want to duplicate that. So actually it's very easy to do. The first thing is, is you're going to pop your collar up away from your shirt and you're going to fold it all in half. So this is the middle of my collar right here and I have it right on the edge of my paper and the paper again is folded in half so here's the fold line of the paper as well because I'm just going to do half of it. And then if I use my tracing wheel, it's going to go to the other side and when I open it up I have one full collar piece. So you're going to start the same way where the folded edge of the collar is going to be pinned to the folded edge of the paper and all I'm going to do is outline the top part of my collar. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to go down to here, the bottom of my collar over here. I went ahead and used my pen to outline the top of my collar. So our collar was like this and all I'm doing now is flipping my collar back into place so we're looking at the neckline of the shirt. So this is the seam between the collar and the shirt and this point here where it was is in still in the same position as is this point is still in the same position here. Because what we're going to do is now use our tracing wheel to outline the top of the neckline here and that's going to give us the shape of the bottom of the collar. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my tracing wheel and do that. This is the basic outline of my collar, but don't forget that you still need to add the seam allowance on the bottom and also on the top part of the collar. Now since this is folded in half, I can go ahead, cut it out on the seam allowance while it's still folded in half and when I unfold it, I have one big collar piece. Don't forget to label it and for normal collars, you're going to cut two out in fabric and then one out of interfacing. The last thing I want to touch on replicating is going to be the ruffle. Maybe you have ruffles on your shirt. In this particular example of my shirt, they're actually using ruffles as the sleeve. And you can see there's two layers of ruffles here. So I have to do one and then I have to do two. They're just different widths. Now it's actually a very easy thing to do. Now although this looks like it's curving, that's just because of the neckline that it's attached to. Ruffles are going to actually be a rectangular piece. So all you need to do is at the base where all the gathering of the ruffle is, so that's going to be here on the inside, not the outside of the ruffle. You're going to measure from where the ruffle starts to where it ends. Or let's say the ruffle's at the bottom of the shirt, you're going to measure around the whole circumference of the bottom of the shirt. So I measured from this point to this point because that's the, the length of my ruffle and it's actually six and a quarter inches. Now normally with a ruffle, you're going to times the length of it by one and a half to two times. So if my length right here is six and a quarter, I'm gonna go ahead and double that. So that means I'm gonna start with a rectangle that is going to be 12 and a half inches in length. Or if I just fold my fabric, I can go ahead and do the six and a quarter and then I don't have to worry about doubling it. So my fabrics are already folded. So let's see here. So I want to go six and a quarter. And I'll go ahead and use my pen so it'll be a little bit easier to see. So again, I have a fold right here, so I'm doing half of it and then I'm going to open it up. Now this is not taking into account the seam allowance or anything else. Then all I'm going to do is measure the width of the ruffle. So I go ahead and grab my sewing gauge here. And for this example, I'll just do one. So let's just say I just need to do the shorter ruffle here. So I'm going to measure that. I'm not taking into account hem allowance. I'll go ahead and add that later. So it's two and a quarter inches. So now I'm going to go up two and a quarter inches here. Go ahead, draw a line. I'm going to mark that on this side as well. 
just mark it. And then I'm going to go ahead, draw a line. So then after I have my basic outline, I could go ahead, add my seam allowance, add my hem allowance down here at the bottom of the ruffle, cut it out while it's still folded, and that'll give me one long pattern piece. Or I can just write place on fold if I don't want to go ahead and have a long ruffle and I can just have a shorter one. So this one, I'm going to cut one. And then if I want to do my longer ruffle, I can also do that as well. So up here at the top, like one side, you're going to go ahead and hem up the ruffle how you want. And then up here at the top, you would do, I'm talking about for your fabric after you cut it out, two rows of basting stitches and you're gonna pull those together and that's what's gonna create the gathering at the top. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 150 sewing video tutorials. New tutorials are released regularly, so make sure to subscribe to be notified of the next release. Thanks for watching.